Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from Skill Builder, and I just want to talk to you about the difference between warm roofs and cold roofs because this does confuse a lot of people and it's really very, very simple. Now we're just doing this orangery here and our intention was to have a warm roof because a warm roof is a lot easier in situations like this. But then we had a little word with a neighbour and the neighbour wasn't too happy about the height. So we've reduced the height because everyone wants to get on with their neighbours. And that means that when we reduce the height, we had to take the insulation from off the top of the roof and put it on the inside of the roof, thereby changing it from a warm roof to a cold roof. Here we have a flat roof. These are the joists, which you'll see going through here. Number two joist there. So we've got a void and then we're gonna have plasterboard here. On the top, we've got OSB decking. And on top of that, we're gonna have our waterproof cover all the way across there, which in this case is GRP. Now, if we put the insulation on top of the roof, insulation being over there, ecotherm, we will put say 120 millimeters of insulation on top of that roof. So we've got the insulation there, 120 mil of insulation there. We've got a sheet of OSB going across the top of that. And then we're gonna put our GRP on the top. Now, as the water, the moisture, the airborne moisture in a house, your family of four, a lot of moisture coming out every day from the house and a lot of it is migrating up through the plasterboard into this void here. Now, if you've got a warm roof, you've got the insulation there, it means that all this area in here is warm. It's, it's within the heated area of the house. Now, that's the important thing. So as your airborne moisture is coming up through here, and it's hitting the underside of the insulation, it's not condensing because the underside of the insulation is warm. So most importantly, what we put here is a vapor barrier. And that vapor barrier goes all the way along the underside of the insulation. So that's on top of our piece of decking that we've got here, in this case, OSB. So the vapor barrier goes over the top of the decking and the vapor barrier has to wrap up the sides and it has to be perfectly sealed all around. So in the case here where we've got an opening, we have to go around with the vapor barrier, tape it up the sides, make sure all the joins because any moisture that comes through here, airborne moisture, that's the vapor. We don't want that vapor migrating through that board, through the insulation and sweating on the top side of that insulation. Because if we do that, we get rot. We get rot on this piece of deck in here, which is underneath the GRP. So if you're doing a warm roof, you put the vapor barrier on the warm side of the insulation. But we're not doing a warm roof because we have to lower it down. And that's very often the case. People haven't got unlimited height to, to work with. So they've got to put their insulation within the joists. Now this is great because we've got a nine by two joist here. We could pack that void full of insulation, except for one problem. We're still dealing with the same physics. Nothing has changed. We've got airborne moisture coming up here. If it gets through the insulation, as soon as it gets through the insulation, it's going to be on the cold side of the insulation. We haven't got this insulation, that's gone. It's on the cold side of the insulation because there's no insulation on top. There's our insulation, 120 mil say. And therefore our dew point, this is the point where the airborne vapor, the moisture condenses into droplets of water. Our dew point is here. Our dew point is always on the cold side of the insulation. Wherever you see the cold side of insulation, what you've got to think about is that is where the moisture is going to form. So what we would end up with is a lot of moisture forming here, trapped under that OSB at the top, trapped under that GRP layer with nowhere to go. So in that situation, it is absolutely essential no two ways about it, essential that you have ventilation all the way through that void there. So if we've got say a 225 millimeter joist there and we're gonna put 100 and say 20 millimeters in there, you can see that we've still got ourselves a clear 100 millimeter space here to ventilate all the way through. Now we need a minimum of 50 millimeters really. So 100 millimeters is good, but we still need to get a through flow of air into that space. And if we do that, we can clear that air, we can clear the 
the moisture as it comes in and condensing. We've got a nice draft going through there and it will blow that moisture away. And on a warm day, that will evaporate as well. So that will keep that nice and dry. I have a friend who bought a house four years ago and he had a cold roof in this situation and they didn't ventilate the void. And within four years, the whole thing had rotted. That includes the joists, that includes the OSB, the whole thing had just turned to mush. So the whole roof had to be stripped off, had a big canopy put over, and the whole thing had to be stripped off and renewed. And this time they put ventilation in. So this is our insulation. And in an ideal world, we would have put that on top of the roof, making a warm roof, but we're gonna have to cut it and put it in between these joists here. And that means that we're gonna finish up with 100 millimeters of insulation between each joist, and then we're gonna to have to ventilate across the front. Now, we're gonna put what they call a soffit ventilator in the front there, which has got those tiny little holes in it. So the air will come up and it will go through this void here. It will go above the insulation here. And we need that draft to come all the way through. You can see that when we put our noggins up, we've left a nice gap at the top for them and we need air to come out at this end. We can do that in several ways. We can build an upstand and put a little ventilated top on it, what we call an over tile vent. Or in this case, we're probably gonna end up doing it with GRP mushrooms, which are gonna be all the way along in every single joist so that we've got a nice through flow of air through there and out of there. Now, when you look here, you see another problem, and this is joists going the other way. Whichever way we had these, if we carried these joists on all the way to there and put joist hangers in, we still would have finished up with this dead spot here where although we've got a soffit ventilator at the front, the air was coming through here and it couldn't go anywhere because it's on this trimmer. So you get that with roof windows. If you've got a roof window, or, or in this case, you've got a lantern going there and you've got these dead spots all the way around, then you have to deal with that. Now, some people would say, okay, just drill holes through the joists and therefore you've got a bit of ventilation going through, which you can do, but we don't really want to drill through these triple joists with a load of holes. So in this case, the GRP guy again, Ben, has got to come up with something really clever and he's probably going to end up putting ventilators all the way along here, mushrooms, just to ventilate this front piece. And again, at the back, because we've got a dead spot at the back, he's going to have to put mushrooms in there. So this whole roof is going to be covered with all these little pots, all these little mushrooms to ventilate it. Whereas what we could have done in an ideal world is a warm roof, but that warm roof would have taken us up another 120 millimeters high. And unfortunately, in this case, we can't do it. So I hope you understand that, the difference between a warm roof and a cold roof. The warm roof has the insulation on the top, the cold roof has the insulation underneath, and you need ventilation if you've got a cold roof. One more thing you must have, even if you've got a cold roof, is a vapor barrier under here. So you put your insulation up, you attach your vapor barrier, or you can use what they call vapor check plasterboard, which has a silver foil backing on it, and you screw that plasterboard up, and that stops a lot of that moisture from migrating up into the roof. So that's a very good thing, because then it leaves the ventilation less of a job to do. So any moisture you can stop migrating up through the roof, you can then not have to bother about removing. A lot of people will be very surprised to find how much moisture will migrate through a sheet of plasterboard. It's a lot. And then the worst thing is that people then go and put down lighters in there. So if they've got a vapor barrier, they go and cut loads and loads of holes in it, put down lighters in, the down lighters get warm, they suck all the air up and they suck all the moisture up. So you're back to square one. So if you're going to have down lighters, make sure they're the kind where you can put the vapor check barrier over the top of the downlighter so you formed a complete seal there. There are those kind of downlighters around, all you're gonna do is look for them. So I hope you found that interesting, bit of a whistle stop tour, but come back and watch this project because it will be coming up on Skill Builder soon. We're gonna be doing this whole orangery. You'll see it from start to finish in all its glory.